Well, brick making's been in our family for about five generations. My, oh, I don't know how many greats, but uh, Timothy Willis came to Australia in 1839, and he was the first brick maker to set up in Barrel. Uh, he had quite a large family, and most of his sons learnt the trade, one of which was John Willis, my great-great-grandfather, and he set up in Crookwell. And my grandfather and his brother Ned, after uh, working with his father for a while, moved to The Rock and set up a new brickworks at The Rock in 1925. They'd worked there for 10 years and found that most of their market was Wagga, and so they both decided they would move into the present location in Chaston Street in 1935, and it's been here ever since. Clay composition here is uh, fairly unique in that it's the, ho uh, the whole of the deposit here is a windblown clay from uh, when, when Central and South Australia dried out. I had a shed down the bottom of the pit which we stored um, uh, enough dry clay to survive during the uh, autumn and winter months and into the spring. We normally would mix it up by our front end loader which you can hear in the background and it would then put the clay into this big holding bin. There's big heavy wheels in the crusher that uh, would squash the clay up. Once it was fine enough, it would fall through the pan plates to a conveyor down the bottom and then taken up the elevator towards the holding bin where the brick machine is able to use that material. By the time it comes to uh, the six o'clock position, the bottom die plate pushes the brick out of the mould and it then comes along with a take-off belt ready to be um, stacked on a pallet and taken into the dryers. We would then take them into the kills where they would be then handled again and hand set in the kill in, a, in special patterns to achieve the brick colours we wanted in the final burn. We normally like to kill up at midnight on Sunday night and finish burning by about three o'clock on a Friday afternoon once we'd reached 1,200 degrees plus. You'd have to be very careful. If you put your head up too high, you'd, you'd get burnt. Um, I'd, I'd have all my hair burnt. You'd go up to the smoko room and you'd touch your hair like that and it'd all fall out everywhere and you'd have no eyelashes or hair up your arms. Um, your gloves used to melt. The bricks would slip out of your hands. They used to melt in your hands. So you, you used to have to shake them all the time to try and cool them down. Um, and we've had, we used to stack them on the pellets. Sometimes they used to catch on fire when you take them outside in the yard. You might have 35, 40 degrees outside and it's, a hell, it's double that inside of you. The original range of bricks in, back in the uh, 40s, it would have been mainly uh, red bricks and uh, common bricks. Uh, during the uh, 50s, they uh, found a clay source up at Tuma, which they were up to start producing a cream brick. And um, during the early 70s, we found that by burning our bricks in a special setting pattern in the kiln, we could produce a black brick. Uh, back when I started in 67, there was three brickworks operating in Wagga, of which uh, they would have produced maybe 7 million bricks, 80% probably used in Wagga. I think the peak for us would have probably been about 1976 where we produced about 4.6 million bricks and at that stage I think we had 26 full-time employees. Probably 70% of my cost was labour related so that was probably all going back into the local economy. Over time production process has improved so that uh, now most of the brick production is through multinationals in very automated plants. These are produced at very low cost and by the time they land on pretty well anywhere in Australia, they make the local product appear very expensive. Our productivity per person was around, around about 140,000 bricks per person. A person employed in a very automated plant would actually be able to produce 25 times that. Towards, say, the end of last year, we were making 1.8 million bricks, and we were the last brick maker in Wagga, and 55% of our turnover was going into the capital cities. I can remember back in about 1984, when there was a uh, husband and wife from Sydney had basically been touring around the state looking for a brick that would match their house in Sydney and they were very very pleased to be able to uh, source something from here and it was a bit of an eye-opener from our perspective because 
Up to that point in time, we'd not sold any bricks into Sydney, and later on, we were actually able to develop a clientele of architects who were aware of our product and uh, worked on the basis of direct marketing through them. The heat is going into the kiln, down through all the bricks, through the floor, to little subsidiary tunnels, and then onto the major tunnels that lead to the chimney. It's sort of like an archery system that feeds the whole brickworks. Unfortunately, uh, due to salinity, our underground uh, tunnel system has been fairly massively ruined through uh, decay. Still got about 650,000 bricks to sell, which I imagine will take a period of time to sell. At the same time as we're uh, selling those, there's the continuing opportunity to uh, fill the remaining part of the pit with heavy demolition. There's a sense of pride if you uh, know your bricks have been used and used well on a, on a project that, that does look good and um, to feel that you're part of it and in, in some ways it's a part that doesn't wear out, it's just permanent. Well, I've always felt that um, if, you're going to, if you're going to make bricks you may as well make good ones.